What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. Today we're going off the script a little bit. I just got this PSA submission uh, back from PSA. I'm really pumped about it. Uh, 24 cards in total that we're going to go over at the end. But I wanted to talk about the cost of grading and just dive a little bit deeper into that because it is quite expensive and there's some unknown cost depending on where you live as well. So I'm just going to ramble for a little bit. Then we'll uh, go through all the cards because it's pretty fun and that'll be the video. So first off, I sent in 32 cards total, but there was two separate submissions. So I used the value submission for eight of the cards, which were like a little bit more expensive of the cards. I'll talk about that in a little bit, whether I think that's actually worth it or not. The remaining 24 cards that I sent in were part of the TCG bulk submission. So those cost 15 US dollars each. And I just want to dive into that a little bit. So here's kind of what has happened. I bought the PSA membership. So the upfront cost is 99 US dollars for the year. That gets you access to like the PSA Collectors Club, which gets you like magazines and stuff that I don't particularly care about personally. But it also gets you access to that TCG bulk uh, purchase. So you can send in a minimum of 20 cards, but it's at the $15 per card price point rather than the $25 per card price point. So that's a pretty nice bonus. So like basically, if you do the math, you got to send in one bulk submission and that's going to basically pay for that $99 annual fee. Uh, but the more you use it, the better off that annual fee like is looking. So uh, that's one cost. If you're just sending in a couple cards, like we're going to talk about my opinion at the end of it. But if you're just sending in a couple cards, maybe not worth that PSA Collectors Club membership because you have to send in a minimum of 20 cards to get that bulk discount. So Next, we package up all the cards, and here's some hidden costs, which you don't really think about, but it does add up. So I had 32 cards, which means I needed 32 card savers, because they want it specifically packed in card savers, like card saver one or twos. Uh, so you package them together. You got to take all the time in the world to put it into the PSA system. Uh, make sure they're all in the correct order, because it, there's a big disclaimer on the site and on the pieces of paper that you print off, which says... If they're not in the correct order, we could charge you more money. So you got to be careful about that. And then, so you need the card savers. Then you need the bubble wrap. You need the cardboard, which I know is not anything. Most of us have cardboard boxes lying around, but it just all starts to add up. Trying to find a good size cardboard box so I'm not paying absorbent amounts. That was bad English. Absorbent amounts of shipping costs, especially because I live in Canada. So that's even more pricey to send it to the United States. So you need all that stuff, package it all up correctly. Like this last submission, this is the third or fourth one I've done now. Uh, so I'm, I kind of know the drill. So it doesn't take all that long, but it still takes like two hours worth of time. So I kind of like to consider time my, like my time as money. So really there's a cost to doing business by just doing this. And of course I'm doing these submissions partly because I want submitted PSA cards partly to uh, create cool content for the channel and partly to do some favors for some people who live around me, like shout out to Moth Dog yet again, who I've sh been shouting out a lot to lately. Uh, but Mr. Jabba also submitted some cards. A few other people in the town that I live in submit cards through me because then we can get access to that bulk discount a little bit quicker. So that's nice. But basically, I don't charge them like any, I'm not making any money off of those people. I'm just doing it and I'm putting in the work. I mean, I'm not losing money on them. I charge them what it costs me, but I'm not making any money so that I can just create cool content. And then they have that expectation where I'm going to uh, display all the cards and then they can come pick them up after I record the video. So there's a couple hidden costs right up front. You need the card savers. You need the cardboard boxes. You need the bubble wrap. You need the tape. You need the the printer to print off the shipping labels, like all that stuff and all the extra paper that you need for PSA. It's kind of wacky, actually, how much paper you got to print off. Uh, and then we actually get to the grading service and that costs $15 a card US if we're talking about uh, the TCG bulk uh, category. So $15 per card, uh, you add that up. This is 24 cards in the submission. That's $360 for uh, this this specific submission. Uh, 
And now, since I live in Canada, I'm just going to talk to the Canadians for a minute. So 360 American becomes $485.04 Canadian based on today, the day I'm recording its exchange rate, uh, which comes to $20.21 per card if we're talking about the 24 cards in this submission. But then you have to pay shipping to PSA. So I insure the package because there was like a couple thousand dollars worth of cards in my package. So that shipping cost me $60 to get insurance for like a thousand dollars worth of insurance because that's the max that Canada Post does. Kind of crazy side rent, uh, but $60. So that's an additional $1.88 per card. Uh, I I took that $60 divided it by 32 because I actually submitted two submissions in one single package to save on shipping costs. So there's 32 total cards. The shipping costs $60. I'll show it up on the screen here, uh, all my calculations. Then PSA makes you pay for your shipping back to your house. So another cost. This time, this specific submission, and I did this one backwards uh, because I wanted them to submit all of my cards from both submissions in the same package, but they didn't do that. So I paid it shipping twice, which is more costly. Uh, but this one cost $59 US. In Canadian dollars, that's $79.49. 24 cards in this uh, submission. So that's another $3.31 for this specific submission. Ugh. It's just getting worse and worse. Okay, now just recently, like within the last two or three months, because my first couple submissions, I never had to do this. And now recently, Canadian Border Services is uh, charging duties and taxes on the service that is getting provided in the United States for Canadians. So I'm paying 12% on the services. So 12% on 360 US dollars or 12% on $485 and four cents. I had to pay duties and taxes of $70 and 22 cents Canadian, adding an additional $2.93 to each card in this 24 card submission. So this is expensive. This is turning into a $28.32 Canadian dollar amount per card, which if I, if I do the rough math, it's like still a 20, 22-ish dollar submission for uh, PSA in US dollars, which is crazy. That's, that's a lot of uh, value or money that you're putting out there hoping for the 10, especially considering that it kind of feels like PSA is really uh, like sometimes you got an outside shot at a 10 and you get there. Sometimes you get the nine and you don't really understand why. And they just have that monopoly on the market and they kind of just, it feels like they do whatever they please. I mean, I've had pretty good success to be honest with you. And I'm hoping to have some really good success in this submission as well. But it definitely is a risk to take because in my perspective, modern cards, if they don't get that gem mint 10, you're actually, you're not making any money. You're actually probably losing a little bit of money after you take into consideration the cost of grading. But if you do get those gem mint 10s, you might be doubling the value of the card. Uh, I remember like six months ago or probably not even that long when I did my last PSA submission video, like the cards that I got a PSA 10 in, uh, most of the time I was like 1.5 to two times in my money if you get the gem in 10. So there is some money to be made if you can get those perfect gem in 10 cards and there's just the thrill of it. So here's kind of the overview of the video. Uh, is PSA grading worth it or is it worth it for you to do so? I mean, there's really these costs. So if you just have a couple of cards to send in every once in a while, I personally would recommend going through a local game store, local card shop, uh, or like a local grading person. Uh, there's, I know there's some in Canada where you ship to them and then they send it in in bulk. They do it all correctly. They deal with all the duties and taxes and whatnot, and they just charge you a flat rate. I'm sure there's people like that in whatever country you live in as well. And then you're kind of skipping the PSA membership. You still get access to the bulk pricing. Probably people who do that typically have even better pricing with PSA because they submit so many cards. So, and you really don't have to do a ton of work. You just send your card into them. They put the submission together correctly and make sure about that. So you kind of skip all the groundwork, uh, but you don't get the thrill of opening this box like I get. So it really depends on your like level of what kind of fun you're looking at getting. 
So number one, the one of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I have this YouTube channel, so I want to create cool content. So that's just like, it almost felt like a rite of passage to be a Pokemon YouTuber that I got to send cards into PSA. So that was like kind of the cost of doing business is how I viewed it. Uh, and then, like I said, the people who live in the same city as me, they send the cards. We can all benefit from it. I don't make any money. I don't lose any money though. So we can all share the cost. And if I don't quite have 20 cards myself to send in for bulk, uh, submission, they can kind of bolster that submission and we can hit that bulk minimum 20 card limit. So that's kind of cool. Um, but overall, like it's just an expensive process. And if you don't, desire or if you don't need to be the one to do it yourself i personally would recommend and i think that you're way better off doing it through someone else who's done it before who has that membership already and whatnot so that's kind of what i had to say the last piece and i've talked about it in the discord and i don't really know uh what the correct term is however so this last submission i had 32 cards total the eight I submitted as values, those were 25 US dollars each or like 40 something dollars Canadian. After duties and taxes, those ones like came out to almost $50 Canadian. So a very expensive cost for those ones. And personally, I've submitted quite a few cards that go a little bit over that uh, maximum value amount if they get graded as a 10. I've still submitted them as, a, as one of the bulk submissions and I have never been upcharged for it. So I've heard and read reports on Reddit and uh, watching videos on YouTube that sometimes if you submit too many cards in bulk and they're worth too much, PSA will just upcharge you. But supposedly that doesn't actually affect the grading performance of it. Like they'll grade it first and then they'll figure out if they need to charge you a little bit more. So that starts to get me thinking. I personally feel like, especially with modern cards, you should just or I should just send them all as TCG bulk as under one submission because this one really actually cost me a lot more money because I had to pay shipping back to me through PSA twice because they shipped my value submission separately from my bulk submission. So I had to pay shipping twice for the 32 cards, one of an eight card submission, one of a 24 card submission instead of just paying shipping once. So that was actually kind of frustrating and Potentially, I could have snuck those eight cards into the bulk and paid 10 US dollars less per card. So it's one of those things. I like to follow the rules, but at the same time, there's a, I don't know, there's a precedent being set. It seems like you can sneak it through that uh, bulk uh, TCG submission. And I don't know. I don't have any other experience with it. So I'm not going to say yes or no to that. Uh, that's just like kind of talking through my experience but I've been rambling on for long enough these are 24 cards that I just got back I haven't looked at all the grades yet I did look at a couple because I just had to scratch that itch uh, when it, I got the email saying the grades are ready you can look on the PSA app and like actually swipe through the cards so I had to scratch the itch but I don't know all of them so this is going to be exciting I'll flip the screen around let's go through these uh, re recent returns of PSA all right, look at that fat stack of PSA submissions. Uh, let's just dig right into it. But first, let me know in the comments, have you ever submitted cards to PSA? It's actually like a pretty cool process, kind of fun to be a part of. I'm not going to cover anything up. We're just going to go right to it. Erica's Invitation, Near Mint Mint 8. Yikes. Okay, well, that's a bad start. Bad start. I only got one 8 on my last submission. So let's see if we can do any better. Hello, that is better. The Lugia, Gem Mint 10, that one is mine. Yes, sir. That is what I'm talking about. She is a thing of beauty. Okay, okay. That's a money-making one for sure. All right, another Gem Mint 10. This one also mine, I believe. Uh, Gem Mint 10, Pikachu VMAX Trainer Gallery from Lost Origin. Absolute banger of a card. All right, let's just keep the 10s coming with the unknown Silver Tempest. Okay. I like it. Let's give her. Come on. Groudon. Paradox Rift. Uh, Gem Mint 10. Nice. All right. We're on uh, We're on cruise control now with the Gem Mint 10s. Let's see if we can keep it coming. Okay. The Charizard V alternate art. Gem Mint 10 from Brilliant Stars. That is not mine, but hot dang. That is a nice card. This is actually the first time when I was submitting this card, 
Uh, first time I ever had held that one in my hand, and it was absolutely beauty as I knocked the camera. This is a big card. My goodness. Champion's Path. Gem Mint 10 Charizard V. Ooh, the black and red Charizard is uh, very, very nice. All right, we're really on a roll here with the Gem Mint 10s. Let's keep it rolling. Okay, we do. Miriam, special illustration rare from Scarlet and Violet base set. Gem Mint 10. Dang. Dang is what I say. Another Lost Origin Pikachu. Gem Mint 10. Okay. I mean, this is... Uh, this is where you make the money, with the gem mint 10s. That's what I'm talking about. There's a mint 9, the Groudon. What's wrong with this one? Hard to see uh, with my mic and the, the camera in front of me, but uh, maybe... I don't know. It looks pretty good, honestly, but hard to tell. Hard to tell. All right, keeping it coming. Blastoise, mint 9. Dang, that would have been a nice one to get the gem mint 10 on that. All right. Mint 9 on the Blastoise from 151. There's another Gem Mint 10. Unbroken Bonds, Marshadow, and Machamp. Tag Team GX card. What a beauty. What a beauty. Okay. Sylveon VMAX from Evolving Skies. Gem Mint 10. We got ourselves a Japanese card here. Master Ball Reverse. Hollow of the Squirtle. Gem Mint 10. That's a nice hit right there. A very nice hit. Another Japanese one coming up. This, the Charmeleon Master Ball Reverse Hollow, also Gem Mint 10. Hot dang. Hot dang. Another Japanese card. Radita Master Ball Reverse. That is your Gem Mint 10. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Zapdos EX Special Illustration Rare is the Mint 9. Okay. Okay. Ooh, uh, Zapdos Special Illustration Rare Gem Mint 10. That is what I'm talking about. That's what I like to see. There's the Mewtwo. Art Rare from Scarlet and Violet 151. Uh, Gem Mint 10. I love this card. I love it. I love it. All right, another Mint 9 Groudon. Groudon maybe is a hard card to grade. We're getting down to the end here. We got the Pokemon Center 151 pre-order. For uh, Gem Mint 10. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Ooh. That is one that I really wanted to be a Gem Mint 10. The Charizard EX Special Illustration Rare from 151. A Mint 9. Erica's Invitation got moving up in the world a little bit. Mint 9, but not that Gem Mint 10 for this one. And we're on to the last card. I mean, this has been fun. Quite a few gem in tens, to be honest with you. Let's see it. Ooh, the mint nine on the Pokemon Center, one fifty one pre order. Squirtle, reverse hollow. All right. Well, overall, honestly, not a bad way to end the video. Uh, appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions. If I should do like a actual tutorial or walkthrough of PSA, could do that if you want. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. We're going places, baby. It's the Pokey Office, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.